Good. All right. Thank you. Here's our phones. <laughs> Slacking. <laughs> yeah. Full out. So were you familiar at all with the original series? I was. Um, my older sister watched it and loved it. And um, I, I went back and watched it. I also read some of the book series. And, um, I'm a big fangirl at heart. So I love anything where I am going to get to be a part of people's um, excitement and watching it by finding little Easter eggs and stuff. So that was primarily my um, interest in going back because it is a different series and different characters. But it was just like, let's find little moments to um, have an homage for the people like my sister who are excited about watching the show because they watched the first one, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your character and how yeah. she differs from the, the original? Uh, yeah, I mean, she's Liz Orteco, so she's a totally different character. She's no longer Liz Parker. She's Mexican-American, as she was in the book series. And um, uh, she is an activist, she is a scientist, she is a woman who is ignited, I like to say. And she has been away from Roswell for 10 years, and she's come back to take care of her dad, and um, really just passed through. But she runs into Max Evans and finds out that he's an alien. <laughs> and her whole world is just turned upside down. Um, so yeah, it's it's fun. It's it's fun to have a character who is so intelligent and is generally someone who has all the answers. And we meet her in the pilot, and her job is amazing. How much do you know about your your character development, like through the I guess through the first season or maybe through the series so far? Yeah, I mean that's been an important thing for me. This is my first time being the lead of a television series, so the tracking of it. I come from theater and I'm used to having all the information, and that's not the case in television. And I've worked in television a lot, but not as a central character. Where I want to make sure she has a journey, and I want to make sure there's an arc, and that our protagonist is learning something. And I will say the wonderful thing with Liz is that as brilliant as she is, she has so much to learn. She is like such a closed off human. She lost her sister 10 years ago and ran away from home. And she hasn't been back, you know? So she is isolated in her way. She is hard. She is a, as they like to say, has had a string of lovers but no real connections. Um, and then she's brought back to a place that's like all emotion, <laughs> you know, all like bringing stuff up. Um, and they've been really lovely with me and like including me in what's to come. and. Um, I've, I'm started finding my footing as a number one and going like I want information and I need information because I want this to be better than what we're used to seeing, you know, um, when it comes to romance shows, you know, and like, um, and it is, it's part romance, epic small town romance, but it's also a murder mystery. And in that way, it's, you know, I, I, I want to honor, I want to honor everything it can be with her. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So her... Oh. No, no, please, no. So for like younger generations, or like someone like me who never heard of the show before, yeah. knowing it was going to get a reboot, do you think it would be something that's easy for um, kind of a wide range of um, wide audiences to be totally to adapt? I mean, it's definitely a whole new show, so you don't need to have watched the original, you know. Um, this show actually honors the book series probably more closely in the sense that the characters are, um, we're going back to like their original names and a lot of the same circumstances. We're just older, you know? Um, but in terms of what the show is, yeah, I think it. I think it's gonna speak to anybody who's got, a, you know, propensity to be a fangirl or a fanboy, um, because there's a lot to love. Um, and the alien thing is fun, it's kitschy, it's like fun to get behind. And that's been, we have some like, like writers in the room who are like, that is their world. Like they go to like alien cons and all that stuff. So we're bringing in some like real life occurrences and playing them in our show so it's also fun in the way it like expands your possibility about that and then yeah it's a murder mystery which I love um, I always get hooked on those shows where I'm like solving along with the characters um, yeah you know and it's a, a romance and it's fun to watch them try to find each other because I mean with this amount of exponential entanglement like aliens exist in our world it's like such a pool and they're trying to find each other amongst the circumstances it's really fun she sounds yeah. really complicated yeah was there something about her that really allowed you to sink your teeth into it? like one part of her that you knew you got yeah and understood where she was coming from I mean I, I, I tend to I come from a dance background and I tend to 
connect to characters physically versus some actors more like intellectually and physically she's very grounded and her feet are fully planted and she speaks from a full voice and from her full intelligence far more intelligence than Janine Mason pretends to have because she's a <laughs> biomedical engineer but um, that was that was like I could I could hook on to that I could hook on to somebody who doesn't apologize for an ounce of her existence <laughs> so that's been so fun and especially in light of the fact that I'm doing that this is my first time being a number one it's been fun to be in a character who who doesn't sway often who knows the answers generally um, uh, it's it's like I think it's encouraged me to kind of like really take care of her and um, uh, and, and really step it up yeah uh, what, what are some things you've learned as being a number one Mm -hmm. So like I you know I've I've heard like Stephen Amell yes. or uh, Melissa Benoist they always talk about like how the, the you kind of have to bring like a certain atmosphere to set yeah. to set an example. Yeah. What have you kind of learned from being a number one? Yeah, you know my I Stephen is wonderful by the way. I at Upfronts when we got the official word and we like got sent to Upfronts he was like listen to me like he gave me all his stuff and then he's like and you call me the day you feel like you're less than great <laughs> that was like god bless you thank you arrow but um <laughs> yeah we it's it's interesting my acting coach works with a lot of actors um on series so with like prolonged you know work and uh he works with um um oh gosh now i'm blanking on her name of course elise she's the lead on queen of the south and um uh, he he gives me some great advice that the two of them have found is really wonderful. Where it's like, don't stress about anything other than doing your work to the level that you expect of yourself. So setting a high bar. And generally, I think when you're coming to work and setting that bar, people want to come and meet it. And that's been so lovely because this group of actors is takes care of me so much that I, I don't have to worry about them. I mean, we've like Tyler Blackburn and Trevi Michael Trevino and um, Heather Hemmins and Nathan Parsons, like all of them have been on series after series after series. So they're all just like, how can we support you? And that's been lovely. It's been, I, I, I think I've had it easy in that way. So yeah. what's it like being, um, you know, lead female, person mm -hmm. of color, especially in the current climate? Yeah. What's that been like for you with so many mm -hmm. young, especially young girls that are gonna be watching this? Yeah, I mean, um, What's, a, what's amazing is that s surrounded by Julie Pleck and Karina Adley McKenzie, um, are, you know, we have so many women on set too. It's fun to feel like it's not, I'm not always aware of it in that way when I'm working because it's just regular to this group of people. And I came off of a year at glorious Shondaland, you know, and um, with Krista Vernoff and Betsy Beers and Shonda herself, and, and there it's the norm too. So I think I was like primed for it. It was, it, I think it was a gift the way these jobs leaked into each other like that. Um, Cause I just don't take anyone's shit. <laughs> I just come to work and I'm like, this is how it is and you're gonna hear me. Cause I know, <laughs> you know? And they are like, yeah girl, that's why you're here. Cause you do know. Um, and listen, I mean, there's always moments where I have questions and I'm like, okay, I, hold on, this is new to me. But um, Nathan is, is right there with me. I mean, we're, we're, we're leading the show together and he's got years of experience and it's, it's, it's good. We take care of each other in that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was, I was talking to these guys over here about how exciting it's been, all these articles coming out about the push that's happened this year for leads in particular on network series that are people of color, you know? And um, it's so exciting to have my photo as one of the like seven at those headers. Um, I take it very seriously and I'm, um, I take portraying Liz Orteco's experience very seriously. Um, and we're, so, do, so does our writer's room. Uh, we're working with Define American, which is an amazing organization and they, um, work in media only, which is amazing, or primarily. And they're just trying to make sure that portrayals of undocumented characters are accurate. And in that way, in the way that Laverne Cox just existed on Orange is the New Black, and that Ellen Jenner just existed on TV, it's like, it doesn't have to feel precious all the time, it's just a full example. It's just a full particular example. And that's what we're trying to do on this show, because I think people are just going to see Liz's family dynamic and be like, this chick is normal, and her family loves the hell out of each other. And they're trying to run a, a cafe, which they've been running for decades, and employ their, you know, workers. And um, I hope people just fall in love with, with them and open up their hearts a little bit, you know? On a totally lighter note, tell do you, me, do you believe aliens exist? Yes, we all do. We joke around that casting like 
nailed a, like bringing together the most alien conspiracy like <laughs> ancient aliens loving cast of all time we on the pilot there was some like weird cloud over arizona or something and like this like all of the you know alien webs like websites were like it's happening and they're like look 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 like sharing it on set it's just ridiculous yeah i totally believe that they are out there and probably just watching us <laughs> just like what are these idiots going to do next <laughs> are you ready for the potential like fandom for the show in terms of uh, you know the, the yeah. craziness that goes along with it i don't know i don't know i am um, i yeah, I've, I've, I've had, like, little peaks of it from, like, gigs. Because a gig will, like, start, and it's exciting, and your name is out there for a moment while they're announcing it. But then it subsides. But the potential of it being prolonged, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I'm an open book, and I like like I like that. But I also feel like, I guess at that point, you have to start making, like, life choices. Where you're like, what do I not want to just, like, spew out on a talk show, you know? Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to spew things out get reprimanded at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you got some time. Thank, Thank you so much. So much. Thank you.